This lesson is on cylinders and quadric surfaces. I'm gonna go over my method for graphing them and how to graph them using Calcplot 3D. A cylinder is any straight line that has been moved along a curve. Um, so what we're used to calling a cylinder is this shape. I would probably call this a right circular cylinder just to be a little bit more specific. Um, and our new definition of cylinder is going to allow us to include a lot more things as cylinders. Um, so I've cooked up a basic example here um, where we're going to sketch the graph of this object um, in three-dimensional space. Uh, so let's jump into it and see how this plays out. This is a cylinder, by the way. So first, since this only has the letters Z and Y in it, uh, this, this equation is independent of x. So I'm going to start by just sketching the graph of this in the yz space. And what I see when I look at this is I see a parabola, because it's like something squared, and then it has been shifted on the y-axis right 3, and it has been shifted on the z-axis down 2. Um, so I just want to remind you about how those basic algebra manipulations affect the graph. Hopefully you're familiar with those. Um, okay, so I'm going to draw a parabola here and it's been shifted uh, one, two, three spaces to the right and then down two. So I get a parabola like this. Okay, that's nice. Now, um, since this graph is independent of x, it's the same parabola, except it's that parabola everywhere on the x-axis. It doesn't matter what the x is. Um, so what I'm going to do is construct the x, y, z space. So if you don't remember, the way we do it is this is the x, and this is the y, and this is the z. Okay, so now what I need to do is take this graph of the parabola that has been shifted out the positive y and down on the z, and then it's that same parabola everywhere forwards and backwards down the x-axis. So maybe I'll start by drawing one that's out here, and then it's the same parabola that goes all the way back in all of these everywhere down along the the z-axis, so I get a kind of graph like this, right? Okay. I don't know, it's not perfect, but um, there you get the idea. So this is a straight line, just all of the lines down the z-axis, or sorry, all the lines down the x-axis like this are straight lines. And um, this line has been moved around this curve. So this uh, shape right here, this graph in 3D, is the graph of a cylinder. Quadric surfaces are kind of the 3D analog of conic sections. So basically what they are is any kind of, of surface that you can build and then when you slice that surface like vertically or horizontally or maybe this way, um, then you'll get the graph of a conic section. I'm going to do an example here where I graph this quadric surface right here. Um, and hopefully you'll see uh, from how I do this what the method is that you can use to graph uh, any quadric surface. So I like to think of it as a house. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some slices for Z. Um, and then that will kind of give me the floor plan of the house. Um, and then I'm going to pick slices for the other letters, X and Y. And then that will kind of tell me what the walls of the house look like. And then, and then usually from that information alone, we'll be able to uh, uh, sketch the graph in 3D. So if z is equal to 0, so I, I'm literally just plugging z equals 0 into this equation right here, and what I get is x squared plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Um, so this is an ellipse. You can see if the y was 0, I would get x is plus or minus 1. So I'll do, I'll do x is like plus or minus 1 right there. And then if the x was 0, I would get y is plus or minus 3. So I get a kind of ellipse that's been stretched out in this way. 
not a bad drawing there. All right, so let's keep going. So next, let's suppose I'm just gonna pick another value for z. So let me pick, for example, here, z is equal to two. So the idea is that like the z is equal to zero is kind of the ground floor and I'm moving up a little bit in the house. So if I plug z is equal to two into this equation, then I'm gonna get here four over four. So this is basically just x squared plus y squared over nine is equal to uh, see, and then this will be one right there, and I've got a one on this side. So this is gonna be x squared plus y squared over nine is equal to two. So let me put that down. Okay, x squared, it's over here, let's do this one. x squared plus y squared over nine is equal to two. Okay, so if I pick if I pick y is equal to zero, then I'm gonna get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of two. So the x has got a little bit bigger. And then uh, if I pick uh, the y, if I pick x is equal to zero, then y is gonna be like plus or minus the square root of 18. So these y's are gonna be even bigger like this. So the effect that that has when I go farther up the floors in the house, my house is actually getting bigger. Um, and then one more thing about this is if I pick z is equal to negative two, hopefully you can see because this z, the first thing you do to z is you square it, then this is actually gonna be the same picture uh, because it doesn't matter if I choose a positive z or a negative z, when I plug it into z squared, I'm gonna get the same answer. So what this means is that this surface is symmetric. The, the part of it that's above the xy plane looks the same as the part of it that's below the xy plane. So now I know what the floor plan looks like. It's kind of ovals, ellipses in the xy plane. And then the farther that I go up the z-axis, the bigger that they get. And the farther that I go down the z-axis, the bigger that they get. Uh, but I don't know what the walls of the house look like. So now what I'm gonna do is plug in z is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. So this is kind of slicing the house uh, north, south, and east, west um, to see what the walls look like. So if I pick x is equal to zero, then the only letters remaining are y and z. So I'm gonna put the y axis here and the z axis here. So what do you get here? Um, this is going to be a hyperbola. And if I pick z is equal to zero, then I'm gonna get y is plus or minus three. So I get something like this. And then if I pick y is equal to zero, then I'm gonna actually get z squared is equal to negative four. Um, so there are no real numbers that do this. So this means that this does not have any intersection uh, with the z axis. So this has gotta be some kind of hyperbola that looks maybe like this. Okay. That's just kind of a nice, um, way to remember uh, when you're graphing hyperbolas, <coughs> whichever uh, variable is negative is not going to have any intercepts. So that's an easy way to kind of orient your hyperbola. So likewise here, if this is the xz plane, then I am going to have x-intercepts. They're going to be much closer. You can see here, if I plug in z is equal to zero, then I'm going to get x is plus or minus one. Uh, and then likewise, there won't be any z-intercepts. So I get some hyperbolas that look like this. Okay. So what we've got here is a house and the floor of the house uh, looks like ellipses that get bigger the farther you go up and get bigger the farther that you go down and then the walls of the house look like uh, hyperbolas so think about that for a minute and then we can use that information to uh, sketch this 3d graph did you think about it for a second hopefully you've got an idea about what this 3d shape looks like i'm about to spoil it so if you haven't thought about it think about it now okay here it comes this is how i constructed the final 3d shape 
you know, it, it's not really easy to tell just by looking at it, but I did my best to make it look like these ellipses were longer down the Y axis. You can see and they've kind of been squished here in the X direction. That That's that similar to these pictures. Oh, I, um, I haven't done the best job over here. I'm just realizing over here I did not label my, um, uh, my coordinates. So I really want to make this these were all just regular old X, Y space. Okay, so I'm gonna take points off my grade. Um, okay, so I've done my best to make this uh, ellipses look like they've been squished in that direction and then they do get bigger as you go down. Um, so this is my general method for graphing quadric surfaces. Um, start slicing the surface by picking a letter and plugging in uh, numbers for that letter. And that's going to give you a bunch of 2D graphs and then you use those 2D graphs to build the 3D graph. The next step for you is going to be to open your textbook and uh, find the place where it has all the formulas for the quadric surfaces that you're interested in and go in and familiarize yourself with the different ways that you can move the pluses or minuses around and the different ways that you can combine them. I don't get too lost in like what the names of them are. You know, it looks cool, an elliptic paraboloid or something, um, you know, but really focus more on how uh, the sign being positive or negative affects which conic sections you build your quadric surface out of. I want to introduce you to a really awesome online graphing calculator that'll help you uh, graph 3D surfaces. Um, and, and I intend for you to use this as kind of a, a check. You need to be able to do it by hand uh, and using your brain and to like logic your way through the problem to come to an answer. Uh, but it's also useful to have a computer to, to calculate uh, this for us. Um, so what you wanna do is look up calcplot3d and um, then follow the first link. Uh, and it'll take you to this really awesome website. And uh, it's a 3D graphing calculator and it'll graph all kinds of stuff for you. So what we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna input an implicit surface. Um, and then let's just go ahead and use the one from the example. So what did I do? X squared plus Y squared over nine minus Z squared equals one. Oh no, the problem is I'm too zoomed in. Okay, so let's here, I'm just gonna click this minus button and zoom out. Okay, okay, all right, so here we've got it. Um, this is a little bit low resolution, so what I'm gonna do is increase the number of cubes per axis. Let's maybe make it 30 and see how that looks. Oh, okay, so there we go. That's kind of a pretty sort of uh, shape that we've graphed here. You can kind of see it squished. Um, now this way, when you look down the top of it, these are kind of like our floor plans here. You can see that they do get bigger and bigger and bigger ellipses as you go out. Um, yeah, so you can go in and mess around with this and, and use it. You can see if I put a plus here, then it's going to graph this kind of ellipsoid here. Um, and you can uh, play around with this. You know, maybe if I get rid of that nine right there, then now it'll make it kind of an ellipsoid in that direction. So please, we're going to use Calcplot 3D a lot. So I encourage you to, to you know, start in this section, graph them by hand, and then go in there and, and use the computer to uh, help you look at the final answer. There is one kind of quadric surface that almost feels like a bit of a trick. Um, and I just wanted to give you a heads up on that one really fast. Um, so this graph right here is the graph of a cone. And the thing that's confusing about it is uh, what happens with the like z squared equals x squared um, graph. So it, it's pretty easy to see that if I start plugging in numbers for z into this equation, then I'm gonna get a circle. You can see that, right? Um, and the radius of the circle is gonna be whatever you picked for Z. But um, just be careful here. For example, if I pick Y is equal to zero, then I get the equation X squared is equal to Z squared. Now, if you square it both sides, this is what I'm saying. Don't forget that plus or minus. So you're gonna actually get Z is equal to plus or minus X. Um, so in the XZ plane, if this is X right there and that's Z right here, here is the curve, uh, oops, sorry, this, I can't stop doing Y. 
Um, so this is the x z plane. So there is the line z is equal to x, but also we need z is equal to negative x. So um, be careful uh, when you have that z squared and you square it both sides, you do need to get the plus or minus. So this is going to have like a circular cross sections. Um, so you should get a kind of like double cone sort of shape when you graph this. So uh, all I'm saying is be careful with that uh, z squared. It can sometimes trick students.